Do you, would you say you have some kind of a photographic memory a little bit or no? No, 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 at no, all. not at all, not at all. So all these no. books, you are either kind of, you can say, page 73, no. second, no, okay, I don't so think that's like not that. you. No, it's not. Okay, I know I've it. known people like right. that, like I, I had professors. Because you were, seem like you may have a little bit of that, yeah, because the way you... No, I don't organize myself okay. that way. I knew professors at, at Harvard, one particular professor, Richard McNally, who was a walking library, man, he... he he, he, extraordinarily well-read person, very, very smart, very fast on his feet. And that's really how he seemed to organize his knowledge. He would know the author, he would know the page, he'd know the source, he'd know where the book was that's on so his shelf. That's so interesting to me. I, but I'm not like that. Got it. I thought you were for sure no. some other. Okay, so let me... So I have a theory that I've been working on for a very long time, and what happens when I read something is I plug it into the theory. So I know the full outline of the theory. It's, it'd probably take me 45... 50 hours to lay it out in lectures. I've done that online. And then, but I keep, it grows and grows and grows and grows. And I Got know where it. to put everything. I, so if I read something, I think, oh yes, that slot's there. And so. And so you store it as well. If somebody asks yeah. you a question, you need to use that fact. You have it somewhere stored where you bring yeah. it and say, okay. But it has to be related to this work Topic. that I've been doing over time. Got yeah, it. yeah. Got so it. it's kind of like, there, there, there's this technique called a memory castle that people have used for centuries to remember things. And so what you do is you, 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 you sit and you, you imagine a, might be a place that you know, like a, lit, a geographic place, a house. And then you can place the things that you remember. Imagine you walk through the house. You can place the things that you want to remember at different locations in the house. Mm -hmm. But you have, to, you have to turn what you're remembering into an image. And then you can walk through the house and, and you can lift things up and find what it is that you're trying to remember. I sort of do that with this theory. It's like it's, it's been, I, I've literally worked on it for, it's been 40 years. And so I know, the, I know the story and I know its branches and I keep adding to it and adding to it and shifting pieces around from time to time. And so that's how I remember things. And I forget a lot of what I read, a tremendous amount of what I read. That's but now and then something pops up and it sticks. You know? That changes the complete perspective for me a little bit. For me to know that your uh, views obviously has been vested for many years, but you're also constantly working on it. I guess this leads to me uh, wanting to ask this question from you is, I think from my opinion, I think I run a business here. I'm an entrepreneur. We do what we do with Valuetainment. I believe the people that make it to the top of any space they learn how to process issues better than others. They learn how to put things together, a system that helps them make a good decision, and then from there they come out with their opinion, maybe based on some facts, based on whatever they collect together, or data, to say this is what I believe about God, this is what I believe about politics, here's how I view economics, this is what I think works, this is what I think is the way we ought to live, the 12 rules for life, right? Here's what I think boys need to do, or women, or men, or this is based on this. What do you do? What is your processing when a topic enters your mind? How are you taking the next necessary step to come up with an answer or a belief that you're very comfortable saying, this is what I believe in? I know one of the questions you don't like to be asked is, do you believe in God? And your response is phenomenal because you said, one, I don't know what believe means to you and I don't know what God means to you because the word believe in God may be a different meaning to me. So that's a very interesting answer to give. But how do you process issues here when a new topic comes out to you? Kavanaugh comes out, everybody goes through the issue with Kavanaugh, right? And you come out and, you know, afterwards, like, well, I think he needs to, you know. Well, I, I usually do think about it. I, but I want to know, like, what's the step? Yeah, Is it a sure. step process? I'd love to hear that part. Sure. Well, I mostly, I can think in images. And so if I'm building things, because I like to do carpentry and fix houses and that sort of thing. And so I like to build things. And if I'm figuring out how to build something, I can picture it. And so I can think in pictures, but I don't usually think in pictures. I usually think in words, and I think pretty formally in words. Like if I'm sitting down, let's say, with the Kavanaugh issue, there was a question. The question Eric Weinstein asked was, um, was there an alternative to him being confirmed or not confirmed? Mm -hmm. Because he sort of thought both of those wouldn't bode well for the country. And I thought, okay, well, what could the op option possibly be? So I think that through in words, and then think, well, he could... Well, I eventually thought, well, he could be um, nominated, and then how would I feel in a situation like that? Well, my, my nomination would be very contentious. Is there a way that I could help dampen the contentiousness and still retain my, um, my reputation? I thought, well, you could be nominated and resign. What would be the advantages to that? And then I lay out one side of the argument, and then I lay out the other and another and another and, and have an argument. And like an in, with inside. yourself. Oh, absolutely. That's what you're oh, doing. Oh, absolutely. Got it. Yeah, basically what you do, and this is really what you do when you think, is you 
you know, if, if thinking is an internalized conversation, which at least is one form of thinking, is that you spin off avatars of yourself and you say, well, you take this position and you take this position and you take this position and then you have each fictional part of yourself lay out the argument and, and argue it through. So, for example, when I write, so that's another thing that I've done a lot of to prepare for my lectures, you know, I've written well, I've written two books and one of them took 15 years. I wrote three hours a day for 15 years every day. That was the first book. That's Maps a technical book. It's a very oh, yes, technical it's a very book. hard book, yes. that. So, so I, laid out, I laid out that argument. But the, the way I did it was, well, first of all, you generate your ideas. Okay. That's the first part. There's actually a technical process that goes along with this. I, I use a computer in a particular way. So imagine I've laid out an essay. Okay. Well, then what I'll do is I, I usually use two screens. I take a paragraph out. Mm -hmm. put it on the other screen, break it into sentences. Okay. So I put spaces between all the sentences. Got it. Then I look and see if the sentences are organized properly, if, that, if that's the proper order. Try to reconstruct them so that they, that, that, that they make more sense, they flow better. Then I take each sentence one at a time and try to write a better version of the sentence, maybe three or four times. And every time I try to write a better version of the sentence, I try to think of all the ways that sentence is wrong and could be fixed. So at the level of the word, at the level of the phrase, at the level that of the technical. sentence. That's technical. Oh, you bet. Like for Maps of Meaning, the first book, I probably wrote every sentence in that book 50 times. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, me? absolutely. And then, well, there's more. So then, so then I'll, I'll take, put the paragraph back together. And if it's better than the original paragraph, then I'll put it in. So then I have a replacement for it. But then also imagine it's a chapter. Well, then the chapter has a structure, so I'll outline the structure. So this is real helpful, too, if you're writing a chapter. It's like, well, uh, um, boil it down to 10 sentences. So you've boil written a chapter. chapter down to yeah, 10 sentences. Yeah, you've got a chapter, write a 10-sentence outline. And that forces you to condense what you wrote. And with 10 sentences, you can see the argument. Does that argument make sense? Then you can cut and paste the paragraphs from the essay back into that structure. And if you do that three or four times, then you have a very, very tight argument. I have a writing guide on my website at jordanbpeterson.com under products. It's free. It's, it's, it's just a Word document, but it outlines how to do this. Imagine if you're writing, so here, here's what you have to get right if you're writing. The whole argument has to make sense as a whole, okay? You can think rather unclearly and still make an argument that works as a whole. Sometimes I read essays written by intuitive students, and the essay works as a whole. Like, there's a good idea in mm -hmm. it, but it's very badly written. But there's an idea there, so it sort of succeeds at the highest level. But then, if, if something's written real well, it's every word is the right word. Every phrase is the right phrase. The phrases are put into sentences properly. The sentences are organized into paragraphs properly. And you have to edit at every one of That's those levels. That's why you said piano. So you're, it has mm. to be like if one, you know, pianist listen to another person play yeah. and one is off, they catch it, right? Yeah, a regular right. person's not going to catch it. Yeah. So you're, you're going to that level yeah. of perfection. Well, then I also read everything out loud. Do you seek perfection in that, in that area? No, but I, what I seek, I wouldn't say I seek perfection. What I seek is that I can't do it any better. So I know a book is done when Perfection I can't write to it your any ability. better. Yeah, that's right. I, I max my ability out. So if I can't, and if I if I'm at the point where when I'm starting to edit, I'm I'm not sure if it's better, then it's time to quit. Interesting. And I also often, if I'm writing, like I'll write something, and then wait. Like you have to wait a couple of weeks to look at it again because often when you're writing and you reread it, you read what you think you wrote. Because you're still, you still have the ideas in your head that, that are part of the cloud of ideas. And it's not until you forget the context, in some sense, that you can actually see what you wrote. And so there has to be pauses in your writing.